Hello everybody, this is not a technique tutorial. We are not learning any real steps today. Instead, this video is to help you prepare for your first ballet class. What do you do? What happens in a ballet class? If you've never taken a ballet class before and you don't know how to prepare, or what to do and what not to do, this video is made just for you. So how do you even dress for a ballet class? Well, if you're a child or a teen, your dance studio probably has a dress code just for you. You should check that out with the studio. But if you're an adult dancer, you're not really going to be expected to go out and buy all those things if you're just trying out your first class. So you can make do with clothes that you already have, but you gotta be a little careful about what you pick. You can't wear anything bulky like jeans or sweatshirts. You cannot wear sneakers in the dance studio. Nothing that you have a difficult time moving in. Instead, wear something that you would wear to the gym, even if it's just some light sweatpants and a t-shirt, something that's easy to move around, something you don't mind getting sweaty, that's great. Today I'm gonna be both the student and the teacher. A teacher, it doesn't matter what they do with their hair, but if you have long hair, it is best to put it in a bun so that it is not slapping you in the face when you dance. Alright, first things first, meet the bar. We're gonna spend a lot of time with the bar. We like the bar. We love the bar. But this is a ballet bar. It is meant only for ballet. This is not a gymnastics bar. Please do not hang on the bar. It is not designed to support your full weight. Do not hang on the bar. So if you know nothing about how a ballet class typically runs, it's going to seem a little weird to you that we do everything at the bar twice, two times. We like to train both sides of our body equally. So we'll start out training our right side of the body with our left hand on the bar, and then we will turn around and train the left side of the body with our right hand on the bar. This is because we want to be symmetrical. We don't want one side too strong or too weak. The teacher is going to demonstrate an exercise that you do on each side, and it's a very smart idea to follow along with the teacher as they are demonstrating. It will eventually be your job to memorize each exercise that they give and perform it without their help. You will run into a lot of trouble if you're not paying attention. It's going to be hard for your body to learn if you're just goofing around, and it's also considered very rude to ignore the teacher when they're teaching. That's their job. So just try to stay alert and aware of what's going on and try to absorb all the information that the teacher is giving you even before you start dancing. They're trying to give you information. We actually do a lot at the bar on both sides and there's a particular order we like to do our exercises. An hour and a half ballet class can spend up to 40 minutes at the bar so be prepared to be here a while. It's nearly half the class at the bar. This is to make sure you're really warmed up. The bar almost always starts with plies. You're basically just bending your knees in each of the positions and adding some upper body movement too. There are small plies and big plies in positions 1, 2, 4, and 5. We don't really use third position. port de bras are just upper body movements front or back or side or in a circle. We do both sides right and left. Next is usually tendus from first position where you just slide your leg in each direction, front, side, and back. Then you may start doing tendus from fifth position, and it's basically the same feeling. Don't worry if you can't cross your fifth all the way. This is a pretty difficult position to get comfortable with. In fact, the teacher should let you modify your fifth position a little bit so that you can achieve a good tendu. It's just a stretching and lengthening with the leg. Next, you'll do dégagé, which just means to disengage, so you're disengaging from tendu. These are swift, controlled kicks that are low to the ground, and they train your feet to point the moment they leave the ground. So it's a lot of footwork here. About a half hour into the class, my personal favorite, ronde jambes. This is to help train your standing leg to stay stable, even when there's a moving leg doing all sorts of crazy stuff. This may take a while to get the hang of because ronde de jambes can go in two directions. You can go front side back, called en dehors, or you could go back side front, which is en dedan. Excuse me, I need to stop this for a second because I just noticed a big no in ballet etiquette. Steve is chewing gum throughout this whole movie? No, 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 no. No food in ballet class, especially no gum. Anyway. Longer ronde de jambes combinations include raising the leg in each direction, and since your hips are a little warmed up now, it's the perfect time to start getting more height. 
This is where ballet class can start to feel a little bit intimidating if you're not flexible, but don't worry and please do not push yourself. Do what's comfortable for you. Don't force your body to do anything that it isn't ready to do. Flexibility will come in time. For now, just keep your legs low to be safe. Now we continue strengthening that standing leg with fondues, a slow, melty movement. The knees bend and straighten at the same time while the working leg extends in each direction, front side and back. We're getting close to the end, just a few to go. Next is usually adagio, if not frappes, depends on the teacher. Adagio is a slow, leisurely exercise with long, extended movements, but it doesn't feel so leisurely when you're the one doing it. It is during adagio that you will make the unfortunate discovery that slower is often more difficult, but slower will help you become stronger. If you're a beginner and you don't think you can get your legs so high, don't worry, proper placement is much more important. So for now, just focus on the positions and the strength and flexibility will come in time. Then frappes, quick footwork combinations to help you get speed in your legs. And we save the big kicks, grand ma, for last, for the end of the bar, once you're very warmed up, so you're less likely to pull a muscle. Yay, you made it through the bar. After grand ma's, you'll usually have a little bit of a break to stretch or to get some water or hit the bathroom. But first, let's go over some etiquette for the bar. I know you're keen to watch closely and watch the other dancers, but it is very important to respect our space. Give us a little space. If you're standing too close, it can be awkward, uncomfortable. You could get kicked by somebody. So, you know, try to back off a little bit. Give the dancers some space. Talking should be kept at a minimum. Keep comments and gossip to yourself. In fact, it's probably best if you don't talk at all. Traditionally, there's no talking in a proper ballet class unless you are called upon by the teacher. It's rude, it's disrespectful, it's rude to the teacher, it's rude to the students, distracting, it takes away their time, they're paying to be here to learn. So it really is like a classroom setting. Don't call out or goof around. Raise your hand if you have a question. While we're on the topics of questions, it may be best to save your questions until after the end of the demonstration. Wait for the teacher to finish giving the exercise and then you raise your hand. Don't try to interrupt the teacher or call out while they're demonstrating. It's distracting. It shows that you're not really watching the teacher. So make sure your questions are well-timed and don't disrupt the whole teaching flow. Most teachers will give you a moment to ask questions before you try it with the music. They'll demonstrate and they'll say, does everybody get it? Do you have questions? Do you need me to go over it again? And this is where you ask your question if you are confused or if you need the teacher to go over something again. So like I said, you might have a little bit of a break between bar and center. Center operates a lot like the bar in the way that we like to do exercises in a particular order to gradually warm up. The order of the exercises may vary depending on the teacher, but we usually start with tendu, adagio, and then work on turns and going across the floor, and then we save jumps for last once we're very warmed up. And we repeat everything on both sides, right and left. So now we have tendus in the center. You don't have that bar to hold on to anymore. You'll find your balance and tendus help with transition movements. You should do both sides, right and left. Depending on the class or the teacher, they may start giving you some pirouettes, either in your tendu combination or your adagio, or just as a separate exercise. Just like at the bar, we had that long adagio, a long lengthy movement to help you express yourself and build strength. It is my favorite. But adagios don't always have to be long developes. Sometimes they're just expressive movements with a lot of port de bras to help you move with the music and feel lengthened. After that, you'll probably have some fun traveling steps across the floor. Nothing too complicated yet. And then the tail end of the class is jumps. We warm up your feet and build stamina with small jumps. Just jumps right in place. You don't travel for these. Not yet. 
Then you'll gradually learn more dynamic traveling small jumps in your petite allegro combination. And then finally, at the end of class, we move to medium jumps and big jumps or big leaps. It's important to get out of the way quickly so that the next person can fly and leap behind you. And here we're just going to uh, enjoy some footage of Steve going a little crazy. So that is the anatomy of a ballet class, but let's go over some more etiquette tips for when you're in class. Again, always pay attention and watch the teacher. Even if you can't do it full out with full energy, we do something called marking when you just go over it, kind of small movements, so you have an idea of what's going on. I have to really encourage you to always try, even if you think you're doing it 100% wrong and it's completely hopeless and you just give up, you can't. You can't give up. You gotta keep doing it. A teacher cannot help you if you've decided that you won't try. I've seen students just freeze up and stand there because they're self-conscious or something. I don't know, but no matter how bad you think you look, first of all, you'll never look as bad as Steve looks right now, so take comfort in that. But it's easier for a teacher to correct something rather than nothing. You gotta give us something to work with. And nobody is expecting you to be perfect overnight. It takes years to perfect these movements. So just show some enthusiasm and it'll help the process go a lot smoother. But on that note, remember what I said about personal space and self-awareness. Don't get so caught up in your enthusiasm and your excitement that you start invading the other dancer's space. You are not the only person in this class. Let other dancers learn too. They are also paying to be here and they want to learn just as much as you do. This should go without saying, but never try to do the teacher's job. No matter how much you think you know, you're still learning. Don't try to teach or correct the other students. First of all, you could wind up giving them the wrong correction. I have actually seen this happen, and it is dangerous because you could also injure somebody by giving them the wrong thing to do. And I mostly see this with bossy bratty kids, not so much with adults, but the last thing you want to do is start building bad habits. It's disrespectful to the real teacher, and you probably don't really know what you're doing either. It's great that you're learning and you think you learned a lot, but leave it to the teacher. Then we have some nonverbal cues that you have to be careful to avoid, such as crossing your arms. That is seen as disrespectful. Constantly glancing at the clock or appearing like you want to get out of there, that's really rude. Just general zoning out and not even looking in the direction of the teacher, that's no good. Hanging on the bar or resting on the piano if there is a piano. Staring out the window like there's somewhere else you'd rather be. Please don't do these things. Not picking up after yourself, not cleaning up your shit at the end of class. Basically anything that shows you don't respect the studio or don't respect the space, especially children. For some reason, they love to hit the mirrors and slap the mirrors, or they just run into the mirror full force. I don't know why they do this. Or when, what is Steve doing? When they smudge the mirrors with their dirty, sticky little hands, no matter how many times we ask them not to, their hands are like mirror magnets, or whatever other body parts they feel like doing. Are you, are you serious? What is he doing? Just please, for goodness sakes, don't touch the mirrors. Don't touch the mirror. Don't do it. And like I said, don't hang on the bar. This is not just for an etiquette reason or a respect to the studio reason. It is because the bar is not designed to be used for anything other than ballet. It is just meant for a one hand check when you use it to find your balance. Other than that, there is no reason to put your full weight on the bar. The bar is not designed to support your full weight. You should not be in ballet class putting all your weight on the bar. That defeats the purpose. You're supposed to be trying to work without the bar. So overall, good ballet class etiquette just means being respectful of everybody, the teachers, the dancers, and the studio, and it never hurts to approach the teacher after class and personally thank them. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this silly video, and remember to stay salty, my friends. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, it is at the Salty Sugar Plum. You can see what I'm doing over there. And if you like what you see and you want to see more of it, feel free to donate. YouTube is my only job right now. I'm officially unemployed, so any little bit helps. You know, I thought that.